contracts one, uh, if you pose uh, virtually any of your standard uh, contracts that include the provisions that, that are very strongly arguably adhesive, uh, that say uh, we reserve the right to uh, change the terms of this agreement uh, without notice and by virtue of you continue to uh, continuing using whatever it is that you're using, uh, you assent. And I ask my contracts one student, does that sound like uh, valid assent, I would expect a very quick answer of no, uh, and an answer of yes uh, would require me to go back and start reteaching that basic part of the course. Uh, having said that, uh, so the standard, uh, the standard advice that you, that I give the students, I give to anyone, is adhesive contracts, especially online contexts, don't work. And we have a body of law, uh, the leading case being spec to be Netscape, that established what uh, one making an offer and looking for a valid acceptance has to do in order to get that valid acceptance. You know, things like actually affirming I agree and so forth. Recently, uh, and Harris v. Blockbuster is probably the leading case on this, courts have started to catch up with these, um, you know, reserve our right to change the terms of contracts at will clauses and said, no, 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 no. That isn't valid assent. So I guess my, again, the short answer is I refer you to Harris v. Blockbuster, which is a recent case where the courts are starting to say, no, that is not going to work, and finally catching up, frankly and ironically, uh, with law that's existed for about 200 years at least in common law with regard to what assent looks like.